I acknowledge the Honourable Member for St. Philip South. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and good morning again. Madam Speaker, I see the government seems to have a deal, some deal of sense of difficulty as it comes to the scope of this bill, what is actually printed in this bill before us. Because, you know what, before I get to that, let me address something. I want to make this, this, the position of our opposition side bench very clear. The opposition is not against trying to reduce obesity in this country. The opposition is not against trying to decrease the level of consumption of unhealthy foods. The opposition is for that. That's a great initiative. However, the government, yes, yes, it's a great initiative to try to decrease those things, the consumption of those things. Or the government needs to realize that they erred in the uh, creation of a solution. So we need to realize that, that taxing people, as the leader of the opposition said, as the member for City West said and all the other members of the opposition, that raising taxes on the backs of poor people is very rarely, if ever, the solution to a problem in this country. Madam Speaker, in the Prime Minister's presentation when he opened up, uh, I know he's going to answer me in a wrap-up, but I just want to make it very clear. I have it written on what he said. The Prime Minister said, the member for St. George, two pressing issues in the Caribbean region are climate change and non-communicable diseases. Madam Speaker, I have one question for him. What about poverty? Poverty is a very big issue in Antigua and Barbuda. We are ranked amongst some of the um, poorer nations in the, uh, in, the, in the world. And we have to look after our people. My people of St. Philip South expect me, Madam Speaker, to come here and to look after their interests. When I go through Freetown, when I go through Bethesda, I must make sure that their pockets are close to as big as mine. It's not just I must come in here and benefit. The people of Antigua and Barbuda nationally must benefit from the policies that we make. And it seems to me that this government has a lack of funds, a lack of resources, and a lack of ideas as it comes to running this country. And raising taxes seems to be their only solution. But Madam Speaker, I want to get to this. They want to enrich oh, okay. But anyway, let me, let me not get to that. Madam Speaker, I know my time is short, but I want to get to a few things. The government keeps on saying that they plan to subsidize the healthy, the healthy foods. And they gave, they gave us, Madam Speaker, a piece of paper that is printed on, right? A list of subsidies. This paper is not worth anything, so I just put it aside. You know, the paper is not worth anything, Madam Speaker, because I have the bill before me, Antigua and Barbuda Sales Tax Amendment Act 2024. And nowhere in this bill, Madam Speaker, it says anything about subsidizing healthy foods. If you want to subsidize the healthy foods, put it in your legislation. Make it your policy. It's not supposed to be, oh, we're going to do it, but what happens if your mind change? You must commit to it by putting it in the bill and bring it before Parliament and have some kind of accountability. Madam Speaker, I'm making that point with the subsidization because it's very important. We can't, as I keep saying, just raise taxes on poor people. We already raised 2% on the ABS teeth across the board come January. And you want to raise another 3% on the foods that poor people depend on, even if it's unhealthy. Have the educational programs that is in your action plan. But subsidize the healthy alternatives. You can't raise the prices on both sides. When I go to Epicurean to buy my healthy bread, Madam Speaker, why bread costing so much money? Bread, you know, bread can cost over $20, a loaf of bread. Subsidize those things for people who have diabetes that you keep on mentioning, who people have hypertension. Make sure the foods that they need are subsidized. So Attorney General, write your notes, write your notes to subsidize them. We'll do it in the committee stage. Madam Speaker, I want to continue as well. A few of them said, I remember the, the member for, what is it? All Saints Honorable Saints member, Saints. I see the member for Unless Saints it's a point of order, I'm not taking anything because it didn't take anything from us, Madam Speaker. I'm continuing. Point of elucidation. Not taking it. Madam Speaker, um, the member for All Saints East and St. Luke, the me who is also the Minister of Education, right? Yes. She said that, oh, KFC prices are rising and, you know, people still buy from KFC. So that alone should tell you in this country, in Antigua and Barbuda, just by raising the price on something doesn't mean that you're going to stop buying it. You're shooting your own arguments in the foot by proving to us KFC just raised the price of chicken, but the drive through lines in KFC got any shorter? No, you are contributing to the high cost of living by increasing taxes on the backs of poor people in this nation and not making any provision to reduce the price of food for those same poor people. 
I'm sick and tired when I speak of coming to this parliament, listening to the real parliament, and hearing the government talk about we're raising taxes on poor, on poor people, and there's no transparency, and there's no accountability, man, speak. It's, it's foolishness. Because, man, speak, where, when was the last time government conducted an independent audit on their budgets and so forth? They can come and make budget presentations to us, Madam Speaker. But how we know what they're saying is a real thing? When was the last time an independent order was done? Where's the transparency? Where's the accountability? Where's the billions of dollars that CIP money that we have bringing in as revenue? Where does that money go to every year? Where is the money in your own action plan? The money you want to raise by increasing the taxes? Where is that budget for that? Where are you going to allocate those funds? It must be not in your mind, but on the paper that matters. The legislation before the House. I don't yield, Madam Speaker. I didn't break no standing order this year while I'm talking, so I don't yield. There's no point for her to raise. Madam Speaker, as I continue, as I continue, in the action plan, they said they want to, what is it? What is it? Create a breakfast program for students in secondary schools. I want to let them realize that a breakfast program already exists in the current system on the school meals initiative. On the school initiative. And on top of that, even the breakfast program does not provide for all students, Madam Honorable Speaker. Member, I see that the... I'm not taking a point of elucidation, Madam Speaker. I'm continuing. As the breakfast program um, helps with some, some sec uh, primary schools, at secondary schools, some students in some primary schools, it doesn't take care of everybody. But I want us, like I said before in a previous sitting, to follow the money. Let us go to budget, the budget estimates and summaries of 2022. All right? And on page 336, this is under the National School Meals Program, and that is in the Ministry, ministry of uh, Education. On page 336, the issues faced by the National School Meals Program is a shortage of equipment necessary to expedite the provision of services to all units. There is a shortage in the center space to facilitate the productivity on a larger scale. That's why you can't have breakfast for all the primary people, so you have to fix that. There's a shortage of transportation to assist with the delivery of lunches to school centers. We don't have buses, we don't have nothing. There's a, there's a shortage of proficient skill work, skilled workers sorry, to achieve the overall goals and objectives of this department. And finally, they end off by saying there's a lack of proficient skilled workers to assist with the organization, organization and coordinating of the Barbuda Center. I know a member for Barbuda is very passionate about that. Honourable member, want to add, honorable member mm -hmm. your time has lapsed. I'll give you an additional minute. Thank you. I'll wrap up in this. Before you want to add more initiatives with the action plan without allocating where this money is going to come from, you, you don't even have no research to tell me how much you expect to get in revenue from this new tax. You call, you call Madam I Speaker, I'm you know. not healing. I take for one minute. You but call I'm $11 finance. million, dollars, Minister of Finance. Where that come from? You could have pulled it out like man from heaven. As I continue, Madam Speaker, you must make sure before you look to tax the people, before, I, because I'm sick and tired of this, for years now, before you look to continue to tax the people, you must have transparency and accountability in the way you govern the people of Antigua and Barbuda. And I, as the member for St. Philip's, I will not be going back to my constituency and tell them I vote for any measure to increase taxes on foods they rely on. Subsidize the healthy options and put it in the bill, if it pleases you, Madam Speaker.